Alright guys, let me explain what I've done here. I've implemented the obtaining of Spotify tokens. Yes, there is not just one token, but two. The first token is for the client calls. It can be used for all public data requests, such as information about artists, albums, music search, and so on. Another token is used for user-specific data requests. It can be fetching of my private Spotify library or getting a playlist of my most listened tracks. And because there are two different tokens, there are two different flows to get them. First, client credentials. So my application needs to ask Spotify to give me this token. I need to have client ID and client secret, which I can find in the Spotify developers dashboard. Then I join them with a colon and put that value in request headers. Make a rest call and that's it. Simple as that. Unlike the process of obtaining the user credentials. Yeah, this diagram is a bit more complicated. For starters, about the authentication code flow. It's a grant type in Open Authorization 2.0 protocol or just Auth2. Back in the day, I was really struggling to understand and handle one. But no worries, I will put it simply so it will be easier to get an idea of what the heck is happening here. Okay, this is my playlist main application. This is the Spotify API and that's a user. And this user wants to connect their Spotify account to my service. So the user clicks on the login button of my website and is being redirected to the Spotify login page. And behind this button is sitting the URL that is generated by my app. It has a bunch of query parameters such as client ID, redirect URL and others. Then right after the redirection, Spotify will provide a list of permissions requested by my service to the user and will ask them whether they want to grant it to PlaylistMate. Ultimately, after the user clicks on agree, Spotify will send to PlaylistMate a special code that my application can exchange for user access token. This token will expire in 60 minutes, but luckily, in the same response, Spotify gives a refresh token, so we could endlessly extend the access to user data. Also, there was one interesting query parameter, the state. It's a protection against attacks such as cross-site request forgery. You can google about it, but basically it's when an attacker takes advantage of exploiting user credentials to perform requests on their user's behalf. And to prevent that, my service will generate a random string and put it into Redis with a detail of 5 minutes. This string will be used for checking whether the request is valid and if it wasn't generated by some bad person. And we actually don't care here if this state expires so quickly, because once the user has logged in, it will be deleted from Redis, therefore will be invalidated. Oh, by the way, I actually use this library called OpenFane for making HTTP calls. It's a declarative REST client and what's cool about it is that it has a simple and familiar syntax. It's just the same as when defining REST controllers. So we don't have to learn any complicated stuff to use it, plus it helps cut down all that boilerplate code. I discovered OpenFane about a year ago and I would say it's all about simplicity and efficiency, letting us focus on the important business logic without getting done to the lower level details. Okay, so for obtaining client and user credentials, and for refreshing user access tokens, I use a single open pane method. And since there are three calls require the same headers, I've created a separate configuration to intercept requests and added the encoded client keys there. This way there is no code duplication and if I ever need to make some changes, it's all in one convenient spot. Alright, that's it for the overview and now testing time. I've created a REST controller with four endpoints. Three of those are there to test credentials and the last one is a callback for Spotify to handle the Auth2 code flow. But before starting my app, I will launch the Docker Compose to get the Redis instance. Then I will create a tunnel between my local machine and the public internet using NGROC. I do this step because Spotify requires a secure and accessible URL for callbacks. And this is the easiest and the fastest way to do that. If you don't know what is NGROC, it's basically a proxy tool that allows accepting HTTP requests from the outside world. It's great to use for a pet projects as it really speeds up the development. But at the same time, it might be dangerous to run it on a work laptop. Because since the local host is exposed and Spotify can access it, anyone else can do the same. So be sure to ask your IT department if they even allow such tools. Alright, Tucker is up. Angerock is running, starting the placemate. 
First I will get the client credentials. Great, we got the token. Now I will link the Spotify account with my application and get the user access token. This should be done in the browser. Awesome, the state was verified and I received my credentials in the response. And the last one, just to be sure that we can get a new token after this one expires. And a new user token is there. And there we have it guys. Testing is complete and everything is up and running as expected. Stay tuned for the next chapter.